Hi everyone, welcome back to another game in our speedrun series. So today we're gonna play the Sicilian defense. Um, I wanna try a different Sicilian, which um, one of our viewers suggested, and that is the move Queen C7. I quite like this this idea of Queen C7 ever since um, I was showing it. Um, it. It has a lot of flexibility, especially if you're a Khan and Timonel player. But this one, this transposes back into an Alapin. So this is definitely one of the more challenging options, I would say. Okay, let's play the move Knight to F6. E5, Knight goes to D5. Bishop to c4. I think we can play the move pawn to e6 here. Um, and also, I think knight b6 is probably okay as well. It's a useful tempo in the bishop, anyway. Like, bishop goes back to b3. You can throw in the move pawn to c4, attacking the bishop further. And then this e5 pawn might become a little bit weak. Uh, and difficult for white to defend. We have to watch out for bishop takes f7 pawns, uh, bishop sacrifices, but in this case I don't think it works because king takes knight g5, we just move um, the king back, I think. It should be fine. Oh, maybe not here, maybe we have to move back to e8. It should be fine, I think. I don't think it works because we have the move queen takes e5 in a lot of positions as well so I don't think it's going to work but yeah it doesn't go for it so we go for the move pawn to c4 and then we're going to go for the move knight to c6 attacking this e5 pawn instead. Now we do have to watch out for knight a3 so he, he might go queen e2 and then knight a3 is coming. I wonder if you can play the move pawn to g5 in this position. I mean, you could play the move pawn to d5, pawn to d5, pawn takes, queen takes. But then knight to a3 looks okay. I want to put immediate pressure on e5 before white is able to to you know consolidate his center. G5 looks like a very interesting move. Knight takes we can capture here. If h3 we can perhaps play the bishop to g7. We'll go for g5. See what happens. I know this is an idea anyway in a lot of a lot of positions. So if knight takes we go queen takes on e5 and then with with the exchanges it should favor black. So we should take here. We take with the queen. Yeah, take with the queen, I think. So if queen takes, knight takes. Then we sort of get this bind under light squares. So d4 was played, makes makes sense. So if I take on passant, then the bishop will just recapture. I'm not sure I want to take. I 
Maybe I go for the queen trade. This is the way to go, and I sort of keep keep this pawn on c4. I'll play h6 to chase this knight away. Let's go h6. If the knight goes back, we can play the move pawn to d5. To support the c4 pawn and maybe look at bringing our bishop out to g4 the rook comes to g8 position is okay pawn, pawn goes to d5 bring the bishop out if knight a3 i might need to play a6 just to stop that pawn from advancing perhaps so he wants to go king f1 that's obvious Now, if, if I go bishop to g4, h3, bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, and trade off these bishops, the problem is I might weaken the e5 square a bit. So then he might play bishop f4, try to jump some of his pieces into the e5 square. But at the same time, he would weaken his king side quite a bit. And also, he doesn't have all his pieces fully developed yet. So it might be okay to do this. If I go rook g8, then he just goes king f1. I could go rook g8, king f1, then bishop g4. This would more or less force him to play knight d2. Or move the knight. Because um, he doesn't want the double pawns. And I do have the option of bringing the bishop back and then recapturing the rook, which might be a bit better. Let's go rook g8. Now let's go bishop to g4. And we'll do the same sort of maneuver with the bishop coming back to g6 and we'll recapture with the rook instead. This one, so it captures with the rook. Oh, is he trying to trap my rook? Or my bishop, I just realized. So maybe he's looking to play h3 so that my bishop can't come back to h5 in time. Okay, but then I can play f6. Play f6 then. I also don't like this knight on b6. It's one of my least favorite squares for, for my knight. I do want to bring the knight back into the game at some point, but first let's solve the problem of our bishop and support this pawn. Support this pawn with um, e6 if we can. So we're sort of chasing our knight away, but I don't. I mean, I don't mind this so much because my knight sort of wants to come back into the game from b6. I don't like the b6 square, as I said. So if he wants to chase me to d6, that's okay. So bishop g6 next. This knight needs to come back somewhere like this. The bishop can come to d6. Okay, maybe bishop g6 first and then something like this. a3. Okay, I don't want to open things up on the queen side. So I should play b5 or b6. Which one is better? Probably should play b5, I think. b6, I'm just 
worried that he goes bishop to a4 and then brings the bishop in this way. I think b5 pre prevents that from happening. Okay, rook a4. I can go rook to b8, that's okay. I think rook b8 should be fine. So bishop f4. Bishop to d6, maybe he takes the pawn. He does have a little bit of counterplay, I have to be careful. I can also push the pawn forward to, to b4. So if I push the pawn forward to b4, he might play rook to b5. Knight to b6, and he might capture the pawn. What else do I have? I have knight to b6 is a move. Let's just go b4. If he tries to bring the rook in here, what can I do? Have to move pawn to b3, rook to b5, pawn to b3, might be an option. The bishop is really short on squares, so it probably has to go back here. Then maybe I take, I mean the rook by itself shouldn't be able to do anything. So maybe I can play b3 there. One rook on the 7th rank shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I'm going to allow the rook to get to the 7th rank. I don't think it's t too dangerous, but I could be wrong. Bishop e7. I have this very nice pawn chain though. <laughs> like, it's a really nice looking pawn chain. And this bishop is really short on squares. I mean, he can probably offer a trade of bishops, which is what he does. I think I'm happy to take this trade because what a wonderful pawn chain here and this rook I can chase away and try to trade it off. I think I should be fine. I should be fine here. Even if I lose the h6 pawn I should be fine. Okay, so we have have this move. I really want to trap this rook, but I don't think I can do it right away. It's going to take a bit of bit of time. I could also give up this pawn. It's tempting. Let's go knight to b5, attack this rook again. If rook to b7, I really want to go rook to b8. And then give up the h6 pawn, take the rook win this pawn and start pushing my a pawn up the board that seems like a very straightforward plan go for that Because I, I think my B, C, and a potentially A pawn would be far more advanced than his H pawn can get to. Also, his H pawn is quite easily managed because my king can just blockade it. So if it's a race between the H and A pawn, I think the A pawn is always going to win. Or, or the B pawn. Yeah, this is a good move though. It's a good move. Take, take, and then he's trying to queen the pawn. So I need to blockade probably with the bishop. Yeah, this was actually a very good move by him. Because now he's going to queen the pawn. So I have to go knight to d6, I believe, or 
I have to... What other moves do I have? Apart from knight to d6. I have bishop to d6. Bishop d6 maybe has some tricky knight to a3. Yeah, some tricky knight to a3. But okay. I also have some tricky moves after that as well. Okay, let's go for this one. This is the position we were sort of talking about before. Where he's going to march the, the pawn up the board. But okay, it doesn't matter. I will just take and then just push. Like we should be much faster here, I think. So to break through, I'm gonna have to play rook to a3, and I'm gonna have to push the pawn to a3 next. Yeah, his pawns are coming up the board though, but push a3 takes. I think we have to push a3. Okay, this one must be a mistake because I take here and then I take on c3. Yeah, now I get two connected pass pawns before he does. So this should be... This should be clearly winning for me. Because I can protect this one as well. I can also take this one. I'll just take this one. I'll just go here. He's also severely low on time. We can. It's the easiest way. Set up some checkmating threats. Yeah, let's just trade rooks. Okay, that was a very interesting game though. So we'll have a we'll definitely have a look at that one. Okay, so this queen c7 move, um, quite interesting. So if they go d4, takes, takes, you have a lot of flexibility because you don't actually have to uh, go straight away into one particular system, especially if you play a Khan or Taiman or this is a a very useful system to play. You can play other moves like knight f6 here, for example. Okay, but after the move pawn to c3, knight f6 here, here bishop to c4 here. So I was initially worried about this one, but then I realized it doesn't quite work because after knight g5, the king can just go back to g8, and queen f3 here doesn't work because queen takes e5 would be just in time to hold the position together. So that's why bishop b3, pawn to c4, here yeah, knight c6, car, uh, queen e2, and yeah, g5 here is a very interesting move. g5 threatening to play g4 here, attacking the knight. So if knight to a3, which is what the engine is giving, g4, knight to b5, queen to b8, okay, knight h4, knight e5, we reach a very interesting position here. Probably we will chase the knight away, but at the same time we're sort of keeping control over these main pawn pushes from white, and the, the game becomes very very um, double edged. Knight takes queen takes e5 d4. Okay, queen takes e2. So it's just an equal position really. So black is doing okay here. G8. So this was all fine, f6 is okay. Uh, the knight, I, like I said, wasn't doing so much on v6, so I was quite happy for the knight to reroute back. Maybe I should have rerouted it right away even, 
before waiting for a5 should go knight c8 knight to d6 straight away but this is all more or less equal so this is fine white's mistake i think came a little bit later so b3 also fine pretty much equal the whole way through but i really like this pawn chain it's quite a nice pawn chain so bishop takes takes knight here, rook goes across. Okay, maybe round about here is where it starts to shift in black's favor because, like I said, the rook almost looks trapped, it doesn't have too many squares to go to. And once I win the a pawn, my plan of pushing the a pawn is going to be a lot quicker than white pushing the h pawn. Um, th this was an interesting move. Takes, takes, bishop d6. So if bishop takes takes i think this is winning for black because we bring the rook across and take the pawn so that's why white took but yeah after this yeah black is just way too fast here way too fast a3 and knight takes is a mistake so probably a takes is better but then same problem like bishop takes pawn maybe knight takes pawn knight takes King e2, knight b5. The rook is entering the game via the a2 square. It's very difficult to defend this position for white in general. So, okay, so it's interesting line. Definitely one you can try out if you're a Khan or Taimanov player. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts and comments in the um, comment section down below if you have any. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.